Early in the morning, early in the morning, in the morning. What's going on, people? It's your boy Cam Topical Juice, and I'm back with a very, very interesting video today. This is a bit like a trending video but also a discussion type video merged into one. That's why I'm talking about it today. I'm sure you guys have seen over the last 24 hours or before, if you watch Elon Musk or Tesla or keep up to date with technology, that Elon Musk has unveiled a new Tesla humanoid robot. And he has stated that Tesla will start building or start working on them from next year properly, right? First things first, yeah. Have you not seen iRobot, bro? Have you not seen iRobot, bro? Did, 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 did that 2005 film not tell you anything? Did that not teach you anything? Did Will Smith in 2005 not teach you anything? Hmm? You can't trust these robots, bro. You can't trust these automated machines, bro. Because eventually they're gonna get too smart and they're gonna realize that humans are the problem and they're gonna dead us off, clean. We're gonna get wiped out, bro, I'm telling you. <laughs> now listen, let me get into this video and I'll explain just my thoughts and yeah, just give you my opinion. And of course, I'm interested to hear what you lot are thinking about all this. So yeah, let me get into this video. Smash that like button for me. Press uh, that subscribe button for me because I'm really, really trying to get uh, 75,000 by the end of the year. It really mean a lot. If you'd help me get there, road to 50,000 right now, that's the next milestone. And yeah, hit that bell to be notified and support your boy's merch in the description below. You know the thing, man. I know you want to look pretty in pink. You're done already. Now, anyway, so as I was mentioning briefly, Tesla and um, Elon, they've now basically unveiled this new robot. And it's kind of triggered a topic for me and my channel. And that is, is technology moving too fast? I suppose it's a somewhat yes or no answer, but I'll be honest with you, I don't actually know. I'll tell you right now, I don't actually know. I'm, I'm, I'm kind of, rather than giving you the answer, I'm kind of exploring the topic with you guys, innit? Thinking out loud, you know what I'm saying? So, you know, historically, right, human technology and um, advancements in technology, modernization, it takes quite a long time. It's usually historically quite a long process, you know, from the Mayan times or whatever, Egyptian times, Roman times, whatever, you know, you can see technology advancing, but it wasn't really until the early 1800s where things started to take a, well, it started to pick up the pace. And that was when steam was uh, kind of not discovered, but we realized and we found out that steam could be used to power things. Do you understand? Steam, uh, steam technology or whatever. And, you know, I think the first steamboat was made in the early 1800s, steam locomotive or something like that was early in, in the early uh, um, 1800s. I think steam trains weren't much longer afterwards as well. And then we had the industrial revolution as well. So then you've got factories being built and then you've got manufacturing lines. You know, this, this is the moment, yeah, where we really started to, we went from here, you know, all that proper slow growth, or that real slow to, you know, like that, kind of like that. And then obviously, then we finally get to the recent kind of modern times is the digital age, right? And then we've gone, we've really gone from this to like that. We've gotten like that, okay? The digital age here is where everything has changed. We have modernized at an alarmingly fast pace. When I was a child, I used to love to dream about what society and what the world would look like in a thousand years. You know, shows like Futurama used to gas me up the year 3000. Um, any films that were set in, you know, utopian or dystopian futures, they used to gas me up in a sense that, rah, this is how the world's gonna look. Like, there's gonna be flying cars here, there's gonna be that there, there's gonna be here, like, there's gonna be there's gonna be pills that you can take and you just, your cancer's cured. And you know, all this crazy, crazy mind like blowing stuff. But now I'm a little bit older, I'm starting to question that, like, is this really necessary? Like, <laughs> wait, have you like, Paul, <laughs> so I'm thinking about Paul. Is this really necessary? Don't, do you think that's necessary? And I'm starting to question like, what are we really doing this for? Now, the re what's triggered this, this topic today is, as I said, the Tesla situation. Now, bringing it full circle, why do we need robots? Like seriously, I, I know the idea is cool. I know it, it seems kind of a mad and kind of surreal at the idea of having a real life humanoid robot, 125 pounds, five foot, something like that. Why though? Why do we need it, right? Because I can see where this is gonna go. In fact, Will Smith 
saw where this was gonna go. Anyone that's flipping watched iRobot knows where this is gonna go, you get me? It's not a joke. This is really the beginning, seriously. Now, Elon Musk here, yeah, his why, his reasoning, is because it eliminates the physical tasks, the menial tasks, the boring tasks that humans don't wanna do, e.g. shopping. So getting the shopping, a human, we don't really wanna do it. The idea is you can still do physical jobs if you want, but you don't have to because we've got a robot to do that. So if we're making robots to do physical jobs, what then happens to people that need a job? Unemployment is through the roof, you lot. You know that, innit? Unemployment is through the roof. This flu has completely, you know, ruined the world pretty much in, in, in so many different ways and people are heavily, heavily unemployed. What happens to all those people when you can't get a job or you need a job and you can't, you can't, supply, you can't feed your family because your job's being taken by robots? Now, I've, I, know, I know quite a lot about technology. In my graduate scheme for my facilities management company I used to work for, I had a placement all about, all about technology, about all the hard services and automation and you know, modernizing technology to make it efficient for humans, right? But one of the consistent themes here is that when we implement technology, you want to make sure that it can coexist with humans. The, the most effective technology is, is technology that humans and, techno and robots or automation, whatever, machines can work, like can exist perfectly together. It's a perfect marriage rather than actually replacing certain jobs. So that's my first kind of concern. That the, the, more we, the more we advance and modernize in, in our technology, the more we're actually producing opportunities for humans. Yeah, not everyone's university qualified, not everyone's got a master's or a PhD. Because if you've got that level of education, you can manage the robots, you can help design the robots. Not everyone, not everyone has that IQ, not everyone has that intelligence. So the way society works is that you've got some people at the top and some people at the bottom, and that's just how it is, unfortunately. I, I hate that, but that's the way it is. There's people out there who are gonna need certain roles and certain jobs, and if we replace them with robots, what happens to them? You know, now the next thing is like, the, the best thing about life is, or the best thing about being human is being human, if that makes sense. Like the idea of walking to the shops, yeah, it might be a bit long, but it's like, it's what makes us human, if that makes sense. Like, I just think in this world, yeah, again, I don't actually know the answer to this. I just think that in this world, we're, with the digital age and, and technology advancing so much, we're so spoiled especially here in the West. Look at what we've got on the end, at the edge of our fingertips. We've got mobile phones, right? That are hugely powerful. We can get any information we can, which is great. You know, we can Google this and Google that and find out this and find out that. But because we've got so much power in terms of as a consumer, we literally have a lot of power. We've got, we, you, know, you know what I'm saying? We have a lot of accessibility to a lot of things. Everything's so easy. I just feel like sometimes we should just take a step back and kind of enjoy the ride. I think sometimes humans, yeah, because we're constantly evolving, we constantly want to reimagine society, constantly want to reimagine certain things. We always want to advance and we want to keep moving forward, but I, I don't know, I just feel like, is it really necessary? If you take away just normal human tasks, what, what do we then do? What do we then live for? We've got all these things that just do things for us. At what point do we then do things for ourselves? I just think the more technology advances, yeah, the more we are detached from real life. Does that make sense? You know, when I was a kid, we didn't have phones. Do you understand? It wasn't phones. Um, music was like um, small handheld music devices weren't there yet. It was even before Walkman days. So what did we do? You play wall ball. You climb trees. You knock on your friend's door. Oh, it's so-and-so out. You know, if you're anything like me, you go out robbing dust, dust caps. <laughs> dust caps off cars and selling them and, you know what I'm saying, and hustling in school and, and trading, you know what I'm saying, things like that. You get like, so, not that I'm encouraging kids to do that these days, but the point is, with technology now, people are very detached. Look at two-year-olds in prams. I'm seeing two-year-olds in prams or in their mum's um, metal pushing trolley thing. They've got iPad. Before the age of three, four, they're computer savvy. Now, now, the pro side to that is obviously, it's good because if that's the way we're going in society, then you, you're gonna want your kids to be kind of savvy because that's the way the world is. But the point, the point I'm making is, do we really need the world to be like that? You know, these kids don't know how to interact with people. 
These people don't know how to have conversations with people and build relationships with people without it being online. Does that make sense? Again, so just bringing it back to Tesla real quick. This is how it starts, you lot. Elon Musk has said previously, factually, this is a fact, he said in 2017, in fact, let me get the quote up, I'll get the quote. In 2017, he said there was a five to 10% chance of success of making AI safe and that companies working on the technology should slow down to ensure they don't unintentionally build something dangerous. And three years later, Elon Musk said there was a risk of humans being overtaken by artificial intelligence before 2025. He said, my assessment about why AI is overlooked by very smart people is that very smart people do not think a computer can ever be as smart as they are. And this is obviously false. He goes on to say, we're headed towards a situation where AI is vastly smarter than humans. And I think that time frame is less than five years from now. But that doesn't mean that everything goes to hell in five years. It just means that things get unstable or weird. Now, this is what I'm saying. This is my fear. My fear with technology, especially when you're introducing robots here, is that if they get too smart, they will realize that we are the problem. They will realize that in order to protect humanity, to protect the world, we have to eradicate the, the, the world, eradicate the humans. Because it's us that are damaging the world, it's us that have wars all the time, it's us that have complete oppression of certain races and certain demographics. So that's, this is a terrible world to live in as a human being, big man team. <laughs> and robots will probably clock that. The most fascinating thing about this is that humans always want to improve technology, but we don't even understand humans fully yet. And this is the most important thing for me. Scientists don't even understand the human brain fully yet, but they're so prepared to want to just advance technology and, and make a, 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 a prototype a robot brain. Our human brains have 86 billion neurons. All these little things connected. All these pew, 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 86 billion. You get me? And we haven't even scratched the surface of understanding how the human brain works, especially psychology and mental health, you know, affected by so many different factors. It's just fascinating the, 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 the desire for humans to want to always, always modernize technology, but we don't even understand how humans work here. So how can you even create a robot that can be so intelligent, you know, when when our brains are so complicated, but I suppose they've got computers that are incredibly intelligent as well. So, boy, I, I don't know, innit? I don't know how I feel about this, man, I don't. It's, yeah, on the one hand, it's very cool and fascinating and intriguing to be living in a world of robots, but me, as I've gotten older, I've st I take a step back from all these things. Why do you think I wanna leave this country forever? Because all this stuff doesn't mean anything to me. It's all fake. This ain't the, this ain't the real world. Everything around you is not real. Do you understand that? Everything, society's not, it was never built like this. It was never found, it was never like, um, the world wasn't designed like this. This is just human evolution over years. But everything around us isn't real. This is like, our, what's real is out there. Nature, trees, sea, animals. So that's what I'm saying. I need to make my millions and just retire out in Shanghai somewhere, Thailand, J Japan, somewhere, wherever in the Caribbean and just relax with nature man because that's where I feel at home and at peace this world this fast paced world is I don't know like just before I go like think when you're on holiday like when you leave if you live in England yeah especially if you live in London which is fast paced all the time how nice is it to get away on holiday just for, for just for five days a week two weeks sitting by the pool detaching yourself from this reality I don't know, man, I've gone off on a bit of a tangent, but that's how I feel, in it? All this technology, all this modernization, it just doesn't do anything for me no more. But anyway, that's my take on it. Let me know your thoughts. Like, comment, subscribe. Uh, I look forward to hearing your, reading your comments. And yeah, man, peace.